Hi, my name is Jen Hageman and I am an equine equipment designer and my specialty is integrating top performance textiles and impact technologies into the equine market. Today, viewer request, uh, the Zone Series by Classic Equine, the Zoom Bang Pack. Um, looking forward to doing this as uh, I did the uh, ESP pad by Classic Equine, I think it was called, and it did really well. Um, so I've been looking forward to reviewing this. So um, the claims of the manufacturer, 30 by 32, it measures exactly by 30 by 32. It is tapered up at the top here, you lose an inch. So, but the widest points it's 30 and it measures exactly 32. Um, the claims of the manufacturer, breathable design remains securely in place, providing conformal layered protection, one eighth inch blended top felt design to be used alone or as a training pad or under a show blanket in the arena. Durable orthopedic grade felt bottom absorbs moisture, remains soft and pliable and provides excellent shock absorption. One and a quarter inch total pad thickness. Zoom bang. Uh, the technology developed to protect pro athletes is available to protect your horse. Zoombang is scientifically tested and proven to protect against impact injury. Zoombang is a patented polymer material that provides truly intelligent protection. At rest, Zoombang acts as a liquid to assure perfect fit and malleability, but on impact, it immediately transforms to a solid state reacting proportionally to the energy applied. As a result, Zoombang only becomes as rigid as necessary to absorb and dissipate incoming shock. I paid $187.98 for this pad. So, overall construction, profile. Love the back profile. I can understand why the manufacturer did not want to decrease yield by um, increasing the front profile because most quarter horses do not have shark fin withers. Me personally, I always err on the side of caution and like to give uh, more, at least a two and a half inch uh, front profile for withers, uh, especially with a harder uh, material such as felt, but um, can understand where that's coming from. And again, the two and a half inch in the higher profile is just my, my thing. Um, the construction of this pad and the way it is put together like the ESP pad is um, extraordinary. They do a great job. Um, the thread is top quality. The stitching is by an expert operator. The leather on this uh, wear leather is beautiful and uh, a top quality durable um, leather it is made in the united states of america which i always like to see um, and you know you, you have to know that these pads for the most part are mostly hand done you know there's we're using machines but uh the operators, I feel like they don't get enough credit where credit is due because this is big, thick, heavy material. The machines are fast and uh, very, um, you know, it requires a lot of finesse and you can see where um, one side here is thinner than the other. It matters not, but it's, and I'm not pointing it out as a flaw, it absolutely is not. It just goes to show you the artistry that um, is required from uh, the operators in our industry to be able to put together this these types of, uh, of equipment for us. Um, they are incredibly skilled. Uh, so uh, we've touched on wear leather, sizing, um, thread, uh, profiles, uh, onto the claims of Zumbin. So we have our 10 pound bowling ball. And again, the 10 pound bowling ball, just to reiterate, is exemplary of the kinetic energy caused between a horse and a rider in motion. 20% is us, 80% is them coming towards us. So um, we have, 
because I'm I'm looking to blow through the marketing of uh, the emotional buy that uh, we so often get targeted towards, which is making us feel guilty <laughs> for riding horses. Um, so we need to protect them. If you are in a 20% body weight ratio, they are very well equipped to carry our weight plus tack, meaning if you weigh in your tack and you weigh in at a 20% body ratio to your horse, um, you're really, uh, your equipment just needs to go on a sliding scale depending on what you're doing and how advanced you are. So that said, what I am looking for in a polymer or substrate is I'm actually looking for no recoil. So a lot of the human um, polymers built for impact are meant for a load and then an unload. They want to deflect. Um, we adapting polymers into our industry, um, especially in saddles, uh, saddle pads, and saddle panels, we want absolutely no um, uh, unload. We don't, want, we, we don't want anything that's helping us um, out of the tack. So uh, what I'm looking for optimally is this. Um, this is a saddle, this is out of a saddle panel that I, I dissected the other day and I have it still laying around so I'll use it again. You can see this is absolutely what I don't want. Um, is It's taking this 10 pounds and it's throwing it back at me. So zoom bank, how is it performing? It's doing an okay job. It's, uh, in my opinion, I feel it's doing the job that it was designed to do for 250 pounds, not 1,250 pounds. Um, so we're about 1,000 pounds off. Um, is there any of that pressure going down to the horse? No, no, your horse isn't gonna feel any of that pressure. Um, my concern is that it's allowing for that, uh, just a small amount of that um, uh, rebound out. Um, and sometimes that happens when you're working with these newer foams. Now, Zoombang has been out, I guess, I think since 2000. I saw it first in 2011, I think, or 2010, 2011, I can't remember. Um, but there's a, a, a number of these foams on the market um, that perform like they were claiming the liquid and then it's, it's like a smartphone as I call it. Uh, D3O is one of them and Zoombang and you'll see it in a, what's called a proprietary state. So you'll see it in the commercials or when I go to the trade shows I'll actually see it in person and it's a goo. It, it feels like silly putty and you can um, you can take a wad, literally you just grab off a, a chunk of this stuff and it's a wad and it feels like and you can wrap it around your fingers and you can whack yourself with the mallet and you feel nothing but pressure. The problem is that the manufacturers, not the equine manufacturers, but the manufacturers of the polymer itself uh, sometimes have a hard time getting this polymer to take shape into a molded form and therefore um, when it comes to market it's not always uh, the same um, the same exact proprietary material they have to add to it to give it um, a, a substance to, to hold form. Some of the things I've worked with with XRD actually ooze um, <laughs> and mold. And of course you, you can't, that's not a reliable thing on the market. So what you're seeing in the proprietary substrate and what you're seeing in the molded form sometimes can be marginally different to dramatically different uh, depending on which company. Um, so this pad for $187.98. What do I think of it? I think it's a good pad. I think it's a beautifully constructed pad. Um, uh, the, the care, um, the quality of, I'm not into felt, you guys all know that, but it's still a beautiful felt. Um, uh, the breathability, 
I can feel my breath marginally through the other side. So it is better than a lot of felts that I know. Um, it's good. It's good. It's not great. Um, and again, it has more to do with this substrate in our industry. It just has that little bit of kickback. So it just has that little bit of, it's not like that, but it has a little bit more than I'd like to see. So um, is it going to do the average rider and average a horse to be a superb pad for them? Yes, it is. Um, for, um, you know what I would do? I would actually stick the polymer, the blue polymer for e, uh, the EP, ESP pad. Uh, sometimes I find to get the proper rating for the horse, uh, I have to layer stuff uh, because again, 250 to 1250 pounds. So you could have an average version and a professional version or extreme version. Um, uh, so is this pad um, doing everything it claims to do? Yes, it is. It's just not quite doing it for the horse. It's doing it for the human. And um, meaning it's protecting the horse on the pressure down, but it's allowing the recoil, which is something I'm kind of uh, a, a big stickler about because that's where we get injured the most when we come out of attack. So I'm always, that's you know my main focus. Um, so as much as I wanted to give this one an excellent review, I'm going to give it a C, C plus. Um, and it's because of the recoil in the polymer um, and that only that uh, um, that makes me a little hesitant to, to give it a higher grade. Um, do I recommend running out and selling these things? Absolutely not. They're great quality and they're going to do a good job for most of the people out there. Um, but as any extreme sport or any professional uh, knows that they need to um, have specified equipment or specific equipment to them when they do that. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I really, really wanted to like this pad a lot um, and I like it. I like it. It's a good pad not necessarily a great pad, and that's my review.